Mother's Day. That means it is tutorial day here at jessiejamesbeads.com. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I have had a crazy morning. Do you have teenagers? <laughs> I have two teenagers. I have three kids, but two of them are teenagers and they're driving me crazy. Just crazy. So yeah, I've been dealing with teenager drama all morning and I feel like I just kind of came in here in a whirlwind and laid everything out and I hope everything goes well so cross your fingers for me because yeah, whew, nobody, nobody really accurately prepared me for what it was like to have teenagers. So yeah, just a little, just a little insight into what my morning's been like. How is everybody else? How has everyone else's morning been. Mine's just been crazy. I'm so happy to see everybody. Hi, Lena. Hi, Susie. Hi, hi, hi. So happy everyone is here. We are making something fun today. Yeah, we're making a necklace. And if you guys want to know a little, a little secret, I don't make a lot of necklaces on, uh, on Facebook Live because it's a process, right? You know, making a necklace is one of those things that takes a little bit of extra time and you have to take your time and you know and so one of the reasons I don't do it is because I don't want you guys to get bored obviously so I've actually kind of cut this project down and kind of put it into little bite-sized bits so hopefully this is not going to take forever and you'll get to see the finished you know necklace and you know it'll be good and you'll be inspired and you'll go off and make something wonderful like you always do um but yeah, that's why I kind of I kind of steer clear of necklaces just because sometimes they they tend to take a while. So hopefully I, I've cut this down and um, you guys will be able to follow along and it's beautiful. And I know you guys, you guys are going to take this idea and create amazing things with it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, before we get started with the project, though, if you don't mind to give this video a share all around, that would be really really appreciated. Um, we. We like to, you know, reach as many people as we can, bring them on in, show them something cool, maybe show them some sparkle. Good morning, Kathy. Hi, Debbie. All right, so let's talk about this necklace. We're using Pantone, and I know you guys are like in love with the Pantone, right? I'm in love with the Pantone. Who's not in love with it? Um, but yeah, it's just... It's such a beautiful collection. If you've not had the opportunity to go check it out over on jessiejamesbeads.com, definitely go do that. It is worth looking at for sure. It is absolutely stunning, and there is a color for absolutely everybody. So, you know, maybe you're not much into red, but you like brown, or you like green, or you like blue, or pink, or, you know, soft, muted, kind of creamy colors. There's literally something for everybody in this collection, and I love that. I love that. It gives you so much creative room, you know? So with this project, I've taken actually three different picks from the Pantone. We are using some of the Fruit Dove, and this is the, the packaging. Okay, so just a little side note. I normally repackage everything and restring everything for you guys so that you can see me open it up and, you know, ooh and ah at it with me. But this project, because I was using so much, I didn't really get a chance to do that. So this is, truthfully, this is, this is open. <laughs> this is not a full pack. I've already, I've already been in this and I didn't really put it back together, but I will show it to you. So we're using some of the Fruit Dove and we're using the di the Slow down, Sarah. <laughs> we're using some of the design elements pieces. And we're also using some of the design elements pieces from Orange Tiger, which is one of my favorites. I love orange, particularly this time of year. Like I think fall, the transition from summer into fall, orange and yellows are where it's at. So Orange Tiger, we're using some of the design elements and it's open and it's not full. <laughs> Um, I used one bead from the Orange Tiger Strand, and it's actually this end bead. So it's this guy right here. There was one down here, and I took it off to use it, but I did want to show you the strand just so you can see how beautiful it is because there are a lot of choices here. And then I also used a little bit of Rocky Road too. I pulled, you can see this is shorter than normal. I pulled a couple of beads off of this, uh, four to be exact. I pulled four really beautiful beads off of this and mixed it in with the pink and orange just to kind of pull everything down a little bit so that it is not quite so pow and in your face. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Obviously, you can do this in any color that you want to. And what's really cool about this design is that you can literally use any of the Pantone 
to create this look. You could go with all one color scheme or you could mix and match. Really, really cool. So that's another thing about the Pantone if you haven't really considered it. The Pantone is literally a color scheme that is designed to work with each other. Like all of the colors go well together. It's, it's designed that way for a reason. So, um, so yeah, because of that, all of this stuff works together. Mix and match and just get crazy and sparkly with it. This is definitely what I consider princess jewelry. So maybe this might not be something that you would wear, um, you know, with your blue jeans. I probably would just because I'm crazy like that. But uh, this is definitely a showstopper for going out or putting in your booth to kind of draw people in. That's definitely what I see this necklace as being. So let's get started. I'm excited, you guys. All right, so here we go. All right. Thank you, Kay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Oh, yes, all my tools out here in the middle. All right, so, whew just give you a close-up look of the beads. Sarah made a beautiful stretch bracelet out of this strand yesterday and it also gives me an opportunity to kind of adjust my light just a little bit. All right okay so this is the Rocky Road strand and like I said I took some beads off of this and you'll get to see them. There's here are just two of them that I had on hand and then there is a couple more. Actually I used six so there's this barrel bead that is just really cool. It's got a nice large hole, a little rondelle, and um, yeah. So we mixed these guys in with this necklace just to kind of, I don't know, it just, it, it just adds a different element to it. So you'll see how we work those in. So this is the Rocky Road strand number two, and this is that orange tiger strand. This is number one. That I pulled this bead. This bead is going to be the um, in the very center of the necklace. I just thought it was really a lovely, lovely bead. So I wanted to kind of make that the feature. But look at the rest of the strand. Like I literally could have picked anything else, and it still would have been absolutely stunning. Okay. So then on in the design elements, just to give you kind of like a sneak peek of what's in here. So it's that three tiered packaging which I am a huge huge fan of you've got these really beautiful vibrant orange tassels that I really love I almost added these to the necklace and then thought you know what that's going to bring it down to more of a casual level and I really just wanted to keep this super sparkly and so I didn't use the tassels but you could there are also connectors in here which I think is super cool I don't know I'm trying to get it so that you can see you see this guy there you go so that the glare is not too bad this has got that double loop on one end and a single loop on the other end. I love these. You can use these in a variety of ways. You can make earrings out of these or you can use these as connectors for double strand bracelets or double strand necklaces or whatever. So I really, really like that. I think that's super cool. And there's a mix of the gold tones and the silver tones. Then you've got your little bubble beads that have the stars, some elephants, and these guys I used. I didn't use all of them, so there are some left over here in the package. And then on the bottom there, I used a lot of the beads out of this. That's why this looks so empty. So like I said, this has been opened. I've picked through it. Don't think that this is all you get because it's not. I promise. I've, I've just used several of these beads. There's a larger elephant, some more glass beads, and these beautiful boho beads. So that's the orange tiger um, design elements mix. And then just a quick look at the fruit dove mix. I really, really love pink. I, um, I'm, I'm not, I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of light pink, but bold pinks are really kind of growing on me the older I get. I don't know what it is about them, but they're really just stunning. And to have this included in a fall collection, I think is really cool as well. Like I said, this just makes it one of those things that there's literally something for everybody. There's the little butterfly, there's some tassels, some rhinestone spacers, glass pearls and some of these cube beads which I took out and used and then you've got all of these really beautiful beads here on the bottom as well so you're getting a lot of beads like a lot out of just the mix like just the two strands of the orange and the design elements mix plus the um the other packaging let's see these inspiration mixes there's one in every color too so you can get like the whole deal you know, you could do like a whole collection in just one color from the Pantone collection. So, super cool. 
Um, something else worth mentioning before I move on, everything on the Jesse James Beads website, 30% off on gold because we are using gold today to create our necklace. It is the perfect complement. So get your, um, get the code. I just dropped some wire. Hold on. Oh gosh. You'll get the code in your email or go over to the Jesse James Beads website and take advantage of that code because stocking up on metal is uh, super important. <laughs> I mean, really, because we can't do much without it. So, all right, so let's get started. We are using some artistic wire. Now, this is totally your choice. You can use artistic wire or German style wire if you want to. I've got an 11 inch piece here. And that is exact, that's an exact measurement. I know sometimes I give you guys measurements that are not exact, this one is. Um, so definitely 11 inches is what you're gonna need for this. If you want to shorten up that middle um, section of the necklace, cut this down and just make it shorter there. I normally tell you to um, shorten things up as on the chain, but with this necklace in particular, because of the way that it's put together, the shortening really needs to happen in the main focal itself, okay? So just kind of play around with it. So this is 18 gauge wire, so it's a little bit more sturdy than the 20 gauge. We are still going to uh, work hard in this just a little bit though. All right, so as far as tools are concerned, one of my favorite tools, and you guys have seen me use this a million times, is the bell making pliers. I'm using the, the large bell making pliers for this. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you've got one of these, go ahead and grab it. This is gonna be your best friend for this design. We're actually gonna use this uh, for a lot, a lot more than just the ends for this. All right, now something to be said about this design. I'm not really showing you anything new. You guys have already seen me do all of the ten the techniques that are in this um, in one version or another of a project. So this is not really new information. This is more or less just a different way to use information that I've already given you. So just to, in case you've got some creative block, this is a good place to start. All right, so we've got the bell making pliers. Uh, something else to mention, I did make a nice flush cut on the end of my wire using my flush cutter. That's important because we're gonna make some loops here at the end and I want them to sit very nicely up against each other. So definitely make a flush cut on both ends. All right, so I'm gonna take the bell making pliers and the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, a loop using the smaller barrel of the pliers. So just grab that wire right at the end between the barrel of the pliers and give it a nice turn, okay? And we've made that little P shape. Now you can see why it's important that I made that flush cut on the end so that it sits really nicely up against the surface of this wire. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on the pliers just like I had it. And I'm actually gonna lift you guys up just a tiny bit. Hold on just a second. Just wanna be sure that I've got enough room here. All right, okay, so back on the pliers it goes. And now I'm going to, you can see I just put it right back on where it was. I'm gonna take the long end of the wire. It's coming through this through the center and it's ready. I'm gonna wrap the other direction around the larger barrel of the pliers. You can either do this by twisting the tool or twisting the wire because I don't have a whole lot of room here. I'm just gonna twist the tool, okay? So we're kind of creating um, an S shape, but we wanna go all the way around, okay? Take this off of the pliers and you're gonna see we've got that cute little S going on. Okay, and now there's actually one more step to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, the large barrel of the pliers again. Um, put the small barrel of the pliers into that large loop, okay, with the wire running straight between them and use that large barrel again to create, whoops, another one of those S shapes and then take it off of the pliers. All right, so we have this kind of funny little doodad going on here. We wanna close this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my fingers and I wanna bring that down this curve here. I want this to come down close to the surface of the flat portion of the wire. I'm actually gonna overcompensate by squeezing it behind and then letting it go. So now it's gonna sit right on the surface there. Okay, so so overbend, not a whole lot, but definitely overbend. Same thing with our little loop here. This has come open um, in the process of making these little curves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with 
my round nose pliers and just kind of help close that back up. I want that to sit as closely to that wire as possible right there on the surface. And then we have this huge gap here. So I just want to use my fingers and again, over bend and close that back up. Okay. So this is going to be that decorative kind of filigree, crazy little loop-de-loop -loop thing on one end. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other end. Okay. And if you end up doing this in the wrong direction, that's okay because we can always twist it around and make them both going the same direction. So there's no worries there. Let's walk through this again. So I'm going to grab that wire between the barrel of the pliers. I'm using this smaller barrel to create that first little loop. Take note of how it lays flat. Rachel says you could make a bookmark if you stopped there and added beads. You absolutely could. You work hard in this and put some beads on it, put a tassel on the end of it, and you have the coolest bookmark ever. That's such a good idea. I like that. All right, so putting this back on the pliers, we're going to go around the large barrel of the pliers this time. Okay, coming on around. I'm going to take this off of the pliers. So you can double check. You see that S shape that we've got. Okay. I'm going to put this back on the pliers, but this time I'm putting that large loop over the small barrel just to hold it. And then I'm going to go around the large barrel of the pliers again. All right. I'm going to take it off, give it a look, and you can see everything is a little off. And we're a little off on the end, so I'm going to go ahead and twist that first so that everything is lined up and facing each other. And then I'm going to work on this a little bit. So same thing, just gonna over bend just slightly towards the back and then bring it back up so that it's gonna lay right up against the surface of that straight section of the wire. I'm gonna work on that loop again. Whoops. Closing that up. Okay, so that looks good. And now I wanna close up this space here. Over bend. And you'll notice I'm just using my fingers. You don't have to um, always use a tool. You've already got 10 tools on your hands. So go ahead and use them any opportunity you got. All right, so we have this cute little thing that's got this scroll work on the end. But because this is artistic wire, even if this is German style wire, it really makes no difference. I want to be sure to work hard in this just a little bit. So I'm going to bring in my block. Before we go any further and I'm using a nylon jaw hammer for this I don't recommend using a chasing hammer um, unless you want to actually flatten out the wire or give it any texture I just use the nylon so that it work hardens without changing the um, the texture of the wire All right, so I've got that end. I'm just going to kind of work my way down. So for those of you who are not really, don't really understand what work hardening is, this is actually a science, <laughs> a lesson in science here. So when you strike the wire, um, either between nylon or plastic and metal or two pieces of metal or whatever you've got, what you're doing is you're actually changing the molecular, molecular structure of the wire. So all those little molecules that are in there, we've woken them up and they are all standing at attention. And it, it creates really stiff wire. And honestly, I'm not... 100% sure why that happens, but I am certainly glad that it does. <laughs> I, I, I've actually researched this and I could get really crazy into it, but I'm not going to because you guys are not here to, for science. You guys are here to make some jewelry. But if you're interested in why it is that that metal hardens that way, definitely Google it because it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of a, a, a jewelry nerd, so all of those little fun things. Um, so Sarah wants to know if you don't have a nylon hammer, is there something else you could use MacGyver style? <laughs> well, um, let's see. Is there something else you could use? Yeah, actually, if you were like in a super pinch, 
and you had two pieces of any kind of hard plastic and you smacked them <laughs> together. I know that's crazy, right? But um, there used to be this thing, I can't remember what it was called, but it was literally like two blocks of nylon that you could hold in each hand and smack them together to work hard in your wire. <laughs> so because of that, I kind of believe that any kind of really hard <laughs> surfaces that are not going to... Um, damage your wire will work. It's really kind of weird because work hardening also happens when um, when you coil your wire or any kind of manipulation. Every little thing you do to the wire is causing those molecules to harden. It's really kind of strange, but yeah, it works. So if you've never work hardened a piece before, this is a really great piece to kind of really see the results because you've got this nice soft long section of wire and then when you bang it with the hammer, you can definitely tell and feel the difference in um, in the hardness of the wire. So, all right, yeah, we just we just had our ourselves a little science lesson. <laughs> okay, so now this is the main portion. This is like the the middle of our necklace, and I'm actually going to pull up the picture here for myself just so that I can see. All right, so we're going to create some little loops in here. Let me show you the magic of TV. Not really, because this is live, but um, this is where we're going, okay? We're going to use some 22 gauge wire to create all these little loops and our bell making pliers, and then we're going to utilize all of these loops to create dangles and just some fun, sparkly goodness. All right, so here's what we've got to start with, and now we want to bring in our 22 gauge wire. I have way more wire than I need. You're really only going to need about 20, maybe 24 inches of this, um, but I always cut more than I need to, uh, you know, just because better safe than sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to anchor this wire, 22 gauge. You can use artistic wire or German style wire, makes no difference. We're going to anchor this to our little scroll work here on this end. So I'm going to take the tail end of the wire and I'm going to go up through that loop, that kind of middle loop there, that's there, all right? And then I'm just gonna hold this with my finger back here on the back. I'm gonna pull this up, give myself about an inch and a half, two inches, and I'm gonna wire wrap that. So I'm bending that down across the surface of these wires. I'm going to bring this up towards the inside as well. Here, let me grab a pair of pliers because that is always helpful. I'm gonna wrap around these two pieces of wire about, I don't know, four or five times. Part of this is um, structurally important, like this is gonna hold everything together, but past about three loops, it really just becomes decorative. So it's up to you. If you got three good wraps in there, you're good to go. A wire whacker, yes! Thank you. <laughs> that is exactly what it was called, a wire whacker. Yeah, so I, I'm kind of under the impression that you can literally whack your wire with just about anything <laughs> and it's going to help. All right, so there's four. Got a little bit of a tail here, so, and I'm also going to flatten all this down just a tiny bit. I'm going to wrap this around one more time just for good measure, just to use up the end of the wire here. And you'll notice I'm using my pliers just because this is a tight little space and it's just easier to get my pliers in there than my fingers. All right, so I have that tiny little tail. I'm just gonna trim that off. And now I'm gonna use my nylon jaw hammer, or not hammer, pliers. Michelle, good morning from Barbados, wow. Thanks for joining us. We're happy you're here. So I'm gonna use my nylon jaw pliers just to kind of bite down on those wire wraps. And this also is going to help work harden those wraps. It's all about the work hardening today, okay? All right, so there are my four, well, five. There are my five wraps there. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this over in my hand just a little bit. The wire is coming out uh, from the back up towards the top. I'm going to wire wrap just around this straight section of wire uh, about three times, okay? So I'm not really grabbing at anything. I'm more or less just continuing the wraps from here onto the singular section of wire. 
All right, so now the wire is coming over the top from behind, so we're going this, this direction, okay? And I am going to bring in those pliers again, my bell making pliers. Now, you guys, we did this before. Whoops, I'm so sorry. With a with an earrings project. So once you see this technique, you're gonna go, oh yeah, I remember doing this. It's super, super easy. So I'm gonna bring in the bell making pliers. I'm gonna grab the wire right next to the last wrap that I made. Okay, and I've got the small barrel of the plier up here on the top. That's the barrel that we're going to use. So we're just going to continue to follow the path of that wire. The wire is coming across the top of this long section. So the next wrap around is going to go behind. Okay, so you just want to continue to follow that pattern. Yes, Lynn says if you run your nylon gel pliers over the wire, it will also help work harden it. Absolutely. Yes, yes, it will. All right, so. I'm going to take the wire, I'm guiding it across the surface of this barrel of the pliers, okay? I'm going behind the straight piece of wire, and then I'm going to wire wrap about three times. And, sorry, I've got a really long piece of wire here, and it's starting to knock things into the floor. <laughs> so going around about three times and actually it's two and a half because I want to stop when I get back up here to the front when I take this off of the pliers you're gonna see what we've created is this little sort of a half little loop here this little half moon shape that is underneath the straight section of the wire also take note that the wire wrapping because it's it's kind of an awkward movement those are not lined up nice and straight and tight like I want them to be. So I'm gonna come in with my pliers and just give them a little squeeze. That's gonna make sure that they are nice and neat. That's also gonna help us along the way. We need 15 of these along the surface of this wire. And in order to make 15 of these fit, we are going to have to move some of these around a little bit and you're gonna need, gonna need your pliers for that. All right. So same thing, coming right back to the surface of the wire. I'm right next to the last wrap that I made following the path of the wire. I'm gonna guide the wire around the barrel of those pliers to get that nice loop, kind of mountainy shape, okay? And then I'm bringing the wire behind the straight section of wire, and then I'm going to wire wrap, okay? And this is just I said one wrap, whoops, two wraps, and then a half because it's not it's not exactly three. Okay, got that wire coming back out to the front. I'm gonna take that off, and you can see we've got two of these little loopy guys. And because we're using the same barrel of the pliers, they are very similar in shape and size. They're not perfect. They're not gonna match every single time, but it's gonna be pretty close. And that's really all that matters. Go ahead and squeeze your loops back up together. And now I'm gonna show you what I was talking about. I've definitely lost some beads in the floor. <laughs> Okay, so you can still kind of pinch these and slide them around, okay? I don't know if you can see, but there's just a tiny, tiny bit of movement there. There's not a lot, but there is a little bit of movement there. That's important. We want to be sure that we have that, okay? So don't come in and squeeze your wraps in between until you get everything done and, and positioned where you want it to go. Okay, then you can come in and squeeze these little wraps in between with your nylon jaw hammers to kind of squeeze them into that surface of the um, straight wire and to work harden them just a little bit as well. Don't do that until the very, very end. So I'm gonna do one more of these and then we're gonna move on because I think you guys get the idea with this. Um, Lynn, yeah, uh, about 24 inches. <laughs> 24 inches of the 22 gauge wire is really all that you need. All right, sorry, I missed that. All right, so I'm right next to the last wrap that I made, bringing the wire along the surface of, and you know what, since we're not going to be doing the whole thing, I'm trimming this off just to get it out of my way. All right, so I just cut off my wire. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. All right, so I'm gonna guide that along the surface of the barrel of the pliers to create that nice curved shape, okay? And then I'm just going to wire wrap right up against on the other side of the pliers right here. 
twice and then back towards the front. So if you guys will remember, we actually did this on a quick link. Very, very early on when I started doing Facebook Lives here at Jesse James Beads, we did this exact design with smaller wire on a smaller scale using smaller pliers on the surface of a quick link to create kind of a, a, a sunshine shape. It was really cool. All right, so flipping this around just because this is really the um, the direction that this is going to go. But it, for me, it's easier to work with the pliers when it's upside down um, and work away from me than it is to try to guide it this direction. But do want to flip it around to just kind of double check your work. Make sure that everything looks good. The spacing is nice and even. The little loops are looking very similar. And yeah, so you just want to continue that entire pattern all the way down. You want to fit 15 of these. That count is important. Now, if you've shortened this and you um, are making a smaller uh, focal section for your necklace, you definitely want to keep an, an odd number of loops so that you have a definite center. So you can shorten this up as much as you want to, but you definitely want to have one loop that is the center, okay? Otherwise, it kind of hangs funny. It just doesn't look quite right. All right, so you would just continue that along. And lucky for you guys, I already have a piece ready to go so we don't have to uh, continue sitting here as I do that. All right, so at the very end, I just finished it off the exact same way that we started. I finished with three loops on the um, straight section of the wire and then wire wrapped around about five times to connect these two loops together, okay? So that's what I've got and I haven't bent it. I haven't changed the shape of this at all. And I'm actually not gonna do that until we get closer towards the end. So for now, I'm just gonna leave this nice and straight and I'm actually gonna sit this to the side for a minute because we're gonna work on making some dangles to hang on this and this is the easy part. All right, so I'm gonna sit that to the side. Now, we're gonna create um, several dangles to hang in the middle. And like I said, we're gonna use this guy. This is gonna be the center of our necklace. I love this shape bead. He's really, really beautiful. The facets on this make this really, really sparkly. And then to top him off, I'm gonna use one of these little orange rondelles. These were all from that uh, orange tiger, okay? All right, so to do this, we're gonna do what I always do, you guys. I'm gonna create my own head pin using a piece of 22 gauge wire. I did say head pin, right? <laughs> I don't know, I get, to, I get to talking and then my, I don't know, sometimes I go on autopilot. All right, so you guys have seen me do this, we're gonna do it a bunch because this is my favorite way to make sure that all of my metals match and it definitely kind of saves money. I mean, if you can make your own head pins, you're definitely saving um, when it comes to buying them. So just, just a nice little trick to have in your bag of design tricks. So I've got a piece of 22 gauge wire. You can use whatever size you want to on this, but 22 is my go-to. I'm gonna grab that wire right at the very, very tip. I'm using the very tip of my round nose pliers for this. And I'm just gonna turn a loop right on around, okay? So I've wrapped that around, look at that tiny little loop, around the very tip of the pliers once, I'm gonna put that back on here, and we're gonna wrap around again a second time right underneath that first one, and we're gonna stop right where we see where that wire was cut, okay? Before we take it off of the pliers, I'm gonna hold it and bend the tail end of the wire out this direction, okay? Taking it off the pliers, now you can see I have these two little loops here on the end that are side by side. I'm gonna take the tail end of this wire and I'm going to bend it around and stick it through those two loops, just like that, okay? All right, now we're bringing in the nylon jaw pliers again. This is really important. You cannot do this without nylon jaw pliers. So if you don't have nylon jaw pliers, go pick some of these up. There are some over on the Jesse James Beads website. Go get them. If you do this with a regular pair of pliers, you are going to strip your metal. So do not do that. All right, so I'm holding it so that the loops are right up against the side surface of the pliers. And then I'm gonna use a pair of my bent chain nose pliers. You can use whatever you want to, but I prefer the bent chain nose pliers to grab the tail end of that wire. And I'm just gonna pull. Couple of things that are happen happening here. I am creating a knot, basically, this cute little rosette. 
okay? It's a nice little knot that's gonna be the top of our head pin, but then because this wire has been pulled through the nylon jaw pliers, then it is also work hardened just a little bit as well, and also help to kind of straighten it out if there were any kinks in it, okay? All right, so there's the little, little rosette that's gonna hold our bead on. And I'm gonna take this bead and thread it directly on, okay? And now we're just gonna create a wraps loop. And you guys have seen me do this a bunch, but it never gets old. I never get tired of doing it, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab that wire right at the top of the bead where it is coming out of the bead. I'm gonna bend it 90 degrees, just like that. Take the pliers away. Okay, you can see I've got a little bit of room there. That's exactly where I want to bring in my round nose pliers. I'm gonna put those right in there. I'm gonna guide that wire up and over the barrel of the pliers. So you can see you've got this kind of funny little question mark shape. I'm gonna adjust my grip to move those pliers out of the way so that I can go ahead and guide that wire on around. And I'm gonna switch hands and then I'm gonna wire wrap. So I've got room for four wraps, but I'm just gonna leave it at three. I don't want to, I don't wanna damage the, the bead by cutting, accidentally nicking it with my cutter tool. So I've got my, my wraps. I'm gonna come in, trim off my tail and double check to make sure that it's not sticking out, okay? And then that guy is ready to go, okay? We're gonna add a bead to the top of this, one of these really beautiful orange faceted rondelles. We're gonna, add, we're gonna wire wrap this one directly to um, the top of this, this bead. So we're gonna come in with another piece of wire. My pieces of wire, I pre-cut these ahead of time. These are way longer than you need. You really only need maybe four inches of wire. Mine are more like four and a half, five inches. So uh, don't think that you need that much wire, okay? I'm gonna come down on the wire about an inch and a half. I'm gonna bend that wire 90 degrees so that I've got this little backward seven shape when I take the pliers away. I'm coming in with my round nose pliers. Same thing as before, we're going up and over the barrel of the pliers to create that funny, funny little question mark and then on around. All right, so I'm gonna take this off of the pliers. You can see I've got my cute little loop here and I'm gonna take the tail end of this wire and I'm gonna stick it through the loop on this already created loop over here on this bead and then I'm going to snap those two together, okay? No um, jump ring needed here, okay? This is just a direct connection between the two. Then I come in with my bent chain nose pliers just to hold that loop nice and flat. And then I'm going to wire wrap. Okay. Oh, thank you. Steph says she's been using my head pin trick all the time. I saw somebody else, I think it was Pam, that said the same thing. Um, yeah, it's a great trick to have. It's one of my favorites. I really, I use it all the time. All right, so I've got my loop here. Those two are connected. And now we're ready to add our little rondelle for the top. Okay, just slide him on. And just a another wrapped loop on the top. This, this one, I'm, I, I don't know that it really matters which direction. I think, I don't think that it does because ultimately we are gonna use a jump ring. So it really doesn't matter which direction, if your loops are the same on the top and the bottom of this or not, it really doesn't matter. Sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't. So, all right, bringing that on around and just wire wrapping that. All right, so that's ready to go. Take that off of the pliers. Hi, Miss Jane. We forgive you, Jane. Jane says she's slow on the uptake today. Totally okay. All right. So here is the center dangle of our necklace. Okay, this is actually going to hang on the very center loop on all of these guys. And we're gonna use just a, a six millimeter jump ring. This is actually a five millimeter jump ring, but forgive me, I didn't grab sixes, I grabbed the fives, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, you can use fours if you want to. I'm gonna attach this jump ring to the top of this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach this 
to this section of our necklace just to mark the center so that I don't have to um, to have to go in and find it again later. It's nice to mark the center with something. So, all right, so I'm gonna open that jump ring. And before I close it, we are going to count in. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, six, seven. That makes this one the center. So I'm just gonna hook that onto that center loop and close the jump ring back. Well, <laughs> I would have, how about we just do the jump ring first and then we'll add the dangle. Now I've lost the center again. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Everything fell out of my hands. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the center. There we go. <laughs> I was just trying to do too much with with two fingers there. All right, so now we're going to close the jump ring back. If I can hold everything still. There we go. All right. So now we have marked the center. This is our little center section. Now it's going to make it a whole lot easier to kind of position everything else that goes on our um, necklace. So on either side of this guy, I'm going to do these little guys. This came from, the, both of these came from the Design Elements Orange Tiger Pack, okay? <laughs> Which is no longer attached to this. <laughs> and so there's one, it's gonna go on the other side. We're gonna skip a loop and hang that guy right there, but I need to create its mate. So let's do that real quick. And I actually already have one of my head pins ready to go. So we're gonna thread this teardrop shape bead on. We're gonna wire wrap the top of it. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go up and over. Bringing it on around. And then wire wrap. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, trim the tail of that off. And now we are going to create another one for this guy. He just needs the loops on both sides. So I'll try to go, try to go quickly here. I, I did pre-make a lot of these dangles though, just to kind of save time. So we are gonna kind of move along a little bit quicker here. Oh, I didn't attach that one. That's okay. I'll attach the, the other end. So I just went ahead and, and did the wire wrapping for that side. I meant to attach it, but that's okay. We'll attach it here in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that bead on. And same thing, grabbing the wire, bending, bringing in the round nose up and over, bringing it on around. And now I definitely do want to attach this. So I'm going to take the tail end of this, thread it through the loop over here on this other bead, snap those two together. You might have even heard that little click. All right, I'm going to grab that with my chain nose pliers and give it a good little wrap and go ahead and trim that off. All right, so now we have the two that are go on that are going to go on either side of our main center bead. It does need a jump ring though, so we're going to open up a jump ring. And like I said, we're going to skip one. So I'm going to skip this one that's directly next to it and come to the the following loop. Go ahead, whoops, and attach that. Okay. Same thing over here. I'm going to open up the jump ring that's already on this one and attach it by skipping one. And we are going to utilize those empty spaces. It's going to create some space between our beads so that there's a lot of good movement here, but we're also going to attach some chain here to make some drapes. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we have more dangles to add. And these are just kind of mix and match. It's the gold, the, um, not the gold, I'm sorry, the Rocky Road, some of the Rocky Road beads, some of the orange tiger beads, and some of that beautiful fruit dove. And we are gonna hang these all side by side over here. Okay, so those three are ready to go. We need to put together the other three really, really quickly. All right, so here are our beads. We just wanna make the, the mate. So the first one is this little chocolate covered rondelle, this really cool barrel bead from the Rocky Road mix. And then I topped this off with one of these orange rondelles. And I loved using the rondelle with this, this barrel bead because it kind of has that, that scooped out part so that that rondelle just lays perfectly. It was like they were made to go together. All right, so same thing, just really, really quickly, I'm just gonna do the wrapped loops on the top and we'll attach the jump rings and then we'll add our chain. And there's actually one little element that I forgot to show you guys, but you're gonna get to see it towards the end. I think it came out of the Fruit Dove. I'm not certain, I better Better let Sarah tell us for sure when we get there. I think it did. If it didn't, it definitely came from the orange tiger, but. All right, two more, super quick. I've already created the head pins for these. I'm gonna use these awesome little cube shaped beads. They have that uh, nice metallic pink and gold to them. And our pink rondelle and another one of the cube beads. So what's really cool about this necklace is that I mixed up the shapes. I don't know um, if you noticed <laughs> that or not. That was a design choice. I definitely could have done this all in rondelles or all in tear shot, oh my goodness, tear shaped beads um, or all in round beads because there definitely were enough of those in all of the Pantone mixes. But I really wanted to kind of add some visual interest to this by mixing up the shapes. So we're using a little bit of everything, the teardrop, the cube, that rondelle, and then this beautiful kind of pointy oval thing in the middle. It's just really kind of an interesting mix of beads, which I like. If that's not your jam, that's cool. <laughs> All right, last one, we're gonna add this teardrop shape and we're just gonna top that off with another one of those orange rondelles. These, this orange is absolutely stunning, you guys. I mean, it's, it's serious business. All right. Thank you. Pam says she loves the variation in the bead shapes. I do too, I do too. That's what makes Jesse James beads so fun, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of round beads, right? I mean, because all beads are good beads in my, in my book, but Jesse James Beads, man, they know what they're doing when it comes to shape and texture and color. It's just fun. It really kind of gives you so many options. All right, so all, all three of those are ready to go. I'm gonna pull out the jump rings because we're gonna attach these. And the placement of these, we are going to skip over another one of the little loops, okay? So we're starting right here where the last dangle is. We're gonna skip over this loop and go directly to the next one. So thread that on. And then we're gonna thread on our little, first little bead here, our bead dangle. Close that back. Now I'm not gonna separate these guys. These are gonna hang directly next to each other. Kind of a little grouping here. All right, open it up. Gonna do the pink next. Close that up and one more and then we'll do the others on the other side. So really the hard part of this, and it really wasn't hard, was just creating this, this center piece with the 18 gauge wire and the 22 gauge wire. Everything after that is really just kind of all your basics. You know, opening and closing jump rings, making wrapped loops. If you don't wanna make wrapped loops, you could make simple loops. It really is, is up to you, whatever you are comfortable with. All right, skipping one, attaching the jump ring. Next one. Oh, <laughs> fell off the jump ring, that's okay. 
thread that thread that guy back on there. All right, so as I'm threading on this very last dangle here, I do want to mention this can be the last step. Um, you don't have to do this next little bit with the chain if you don't want to. You could just create this section and be done with it, bend your wire and attach your chain to it. Um, but I like to get fancy, so we're going to add some chain to this to just kind of, I don't know, it's just going to make things look a little different. So the first piece of chain that we are going to attach is going to go... Oh, not this one. Whoops. This guy. Now, I didn't pre-measure, but I do have my ruler. So let's pull this out and just give it a little look. It does have, I did put uh, the jump rings on both ends ahead of time, just so I wouldn't lose them. And this is seven inches of chain. Okay. So the middle section of your chain, seven inches, that does not include your jump rings. I'm going to open up the jump ring. And we are going to attach this guy. One side is going to go over here on this last loop. Right there. Right? Let me double check that before I, before I close this up. That is, let's see. Yep, that's right. Always have to double check. You know, I sleep between... <laughs> making the original piece and then coming here to put it together for you guys. So I always have to, always need to double check. All right, so close that jump ring. I'm gonna lay this back down again so you can kind of see where we're going. So this guy is gonna drape. He's gonna come on around and he's gonna attach to this one over here. So he's gonna drape underneath the entire section. All right, I'll just open him up. And attach him on just like so okay you could stop here if you wanted to you don't have to add any more chain if you don't want to but I do have two more pieces of chain that are gonna go like this okay and the little extra element that I've got is this guy look how pretty that is so this guy I think this was in the fruit dove pretty sure that it was. If it wasn't, it was in the orange tiger. Sarah, let us know for sure. I think this was in the fruit dove. There's two of them. And I want to attach these on either side just because they're so cool. <laughs> so what I've done is there, the chain is already pre-attached to this. I did that earlier with a six millimeter jump ring, but I also have a little four millimeter jump ring here. And the four millimeter jump ring is actually going to be the connection between the um the little extra element and this bottom loop over here okay all right so i'm just going to open that up and throw that on here well i'm having trouble seeing what i'm doing here there we go just close that jump ring back so when i lay this out Oops. This little element is gonna hang down and then this piece of chain is gonna come on around and up here and hook between these two little beads here in the middle, okay? I just could not resist using that extra little rhinestone component. It's just so pretty. And it's another one of those things that it's got that loop on the back that you can use, which I utilized in putting this together. But you can actually loop onto the little leaf shapes on it if you wanted to. You know, you don't you don't have to you don't have to use it the standard way. And it's cool because that loop, see, it's on the back. So if you didn't use it, nobody would notice, which is super cool. All right, so same thing. I've already got my chain attached to my little element, but I do have this four millimeter jump ring that I'm gonna use to connect this to this bottom loop right here where my finger is. So I'm gonna open that up. And we've only got like basically two steps left to kind of complete this necklace. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this on around. And this is going to go in the center between those two, our center bead and the next one. 
I know it's kind of a mess when it's laying down. It's really kind of hard to see because there's a lot going on, but hopefully I'll be able to pull it all down so that you can really get an idea of it. it when it's laying flat, it definitely does just does not hang, <laughs> clearly, because it's laying. But, um, you know, when you hold it up, you really, you get the idea of what's going on here. And I'll show it to you. I'll show you the finished when we get there. All right, so the last step is I want to add these two chocolate colored rondelles on either side here and then we're just going to attach some chain to that. I probably should have pre-done the um, wrapping on these but I'll do it quickly because after we attach the chain I do want to kind of bend this into shape and I'll show you how to do that just really gently. So let me speed through this real quick and then we'll We'll attach our chain section. So I didn't, I don't have a measurement of the chain section um, as far as the length for the necklace is concerned because that's totally up to you to decide how long you want this necklace to be. I wanted this to be kind of short um, because I wanted all of this, um, all of this business to be up close to my neck. It's not a choker length, but it's, uh, it's pretty close. It's probably about a 16 or a 17 as far as measurements are concerned. All right, so I did that wrap loop on the bottom. I'm just doing these really quickly, you guys. So don't think that I'm <laughs> I'm being rude and just, you know, I'm just speeding through so we can go connect everything. This kind of gives you an indication of how many of these wrap loops I've made in my lifetime because I can I can whip these up pretty quickly. And again, the, the addition of these rondelles, um, this is really just to kind of bring that brown up. Um, because there is some brown here down in our dangles. And I didn't want that brown color to get lost in the design. So in order to make sure that the brown continues on up into the rest of the necklace I chose to use these I could have used an orange or a pink bead in place of this brown but I don't know I felt like the brown really needed it needed an extra little boost so all right so there are our little rondelles and then here is our chain I've already got this all ready to go so we're just gonna very quickly attach this with some jump rings and then we are going to bend our necklace around into the shape that we want it to be and we'll be done so I'm gonna hook this jump ring right here onto this outer loop attach it to our our little bead and hold it up just a little bit let gravity help me here closing that up open up this jump ring that's already on my piece of chain oh my well <laughs> Just knock it out of my hand and loop that through okay and close this back up same thing over here on the other side just very very quickly attaching our jump ring and our bead You could do this entire necklace in um, in a silver color. You could do this in copper. You could do this in antique brass, and it would look absolutely beautiful. It's a really cool design that you can really kind of mix and match. You could even mix and match your metals in this, which I think would be really cool. I like mixed metals. That's I'm a fan. All right, so here's everything all laid out. The whole thing is connected. It's ready to go. But I do want to bend this. And remember, we have work hardened this. So the bending process is, is going to be slow. Okay. And you just want to make really, really gentle movements with this. I like to start in the center. So find that center bead with that center loop. And just use your, your index finger to just kind of press down. Okay. And you can see I'm starting to create. And I'm moving really slowly. I'm starting to create... A V shape here okay I don't want a V shape if you do go for it I just want to mark the center and then very gently come over here and kind of mark the center and push it down a little bit okay you just want to make really really gentle movements because if you don't you will 
bend this in a way that you will never be able to get back into, into a, a, a good shape again. All right, so I've got a nice little bend here. It's not perfect, but when I put it on a bust, I will really be able to get a good look at the curve and be able to adjust it a little bit more, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this on a bust. I'm gonna flip you guys around. We're gonna look at it, and then we will say our goodbyes, all right? So, hi, hi. Ugh, always had to see what I look like when I come back. Never really know what you're gonna get. All right, so I'm gonna put this on this necklace bust here. And let's see. Now, oh, it's hanging kind of, kind of low here. But you can see now you can really adjust the curve in that main piece of wire. Okay, and you can also see just how the drapes of that chain works by getting it up onto a necklace bust. In fact, sometimes when I'm creating a necklace, I build it the whole thing, particularly when I'm using chain drapes, I'll build the entire thing on a bust. So keep that in mind. If you're a beginner and you're like having trouble, everything laying flat is just not quite working for you, go ahead and put it on a bust and work from there. I find that sometimes depending on what the design is, that tends to be a lot easier. It's much easier to see for sure. Um, really kind of how everything is going to hang and lay and you can always just use you know what you've got on hand and you know use a ribbon or your chain or whatever don't put the ends on it just tie it on here so that you can work so hope that's helped but yeah I thought this turned out really pretty I thought it was a uh, definitely a showstopper I don't know I might wear that with my jeans I guess it kind of just depends. I mean, because I, I kind of dress my jeans up no matter what. Um, well, not no matter what, but I do dress my jeans up on occasion. So, all right. So, whew. thank you guys so much for joining me this Thursday morning for this really fun necklace design. It was fun. It was fun. It, it, um, I'm glad that it worked up the way that it did. Uh, I could have shortened it up even a little bit more, but I think that, you know, I think it went... It went well as far as time is concerned, so I appreciate it. Um, if you guys are interested, I am going, as soon as I'm done here, <laughs> I'm going to down a bottle of water real quick, and then I'm hopping on over to the Silver, Silk, and More Facebook page to do another necklace design over there using a different Pantone color from Jesse James Speed. So if you guys want to see another project, <laughs> let's go on over there, but if not, Join me tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Designs at 1 p.m. for a, yet again, another necklace project. Here, let me show it to you just to give you a little teaser. I used the green beads. So tomorrow's necklace is a multi-strand green in that Eden from the Pantone, which oh, I cannot get enough of. Loving the green. So, all right. You guys, if I don't see you over at Silver Silk or I don't see you tomorrow, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week and a great weekend. And I will see you guys again, same time, same place next week. Bye, guys.